Hello, God bless. This is Daniel Maximoff with another vlog. So, this vlog is gonna be a, a bit different than my than my usual videos. It's gonna be me just, you know, doing some self-reflecting and more, you know, just sharing my thoughts with you guys on. Because I came across Mario Bryson videos on TikTok today. Well, technically, I don't really have TikTok. I just clicked on a link um, the, from the Vision and Christian Mario. You know, and where he explaining, he was explaining where yoga is wrong, and and I clicked on his link to because he has a YouTube video. Um, it seems that. He had some doubts in his Christianity at some point, and so I clicked on it and I saw and I read his testimony, and it was intense, cause I and then I googled him today to find out what happened to him, and it turns out that his nudes leaked out over the internet. And it caused serious PTSD, if you will, on for Christians who were following his fans. A lot of people were shocked, and myself included. And um, I guess the biggest shocker is, or the biggest whammy, or double down, is that in the internet things are permanent. So. Once this goes viral, there's no stopping it. Unless the censorship police do it, which I doubt they will, because they like uh, this type of coverage and this type of smearing to campaign to happen, especially on, on people who share God's words. So, yeah. I read. I saw what happened. I I saw his testimony, and it seems like he discontinued social media after 2021. So it's been a year now since any content of his has made has surfaced, and most likely it might never come to pass. So, and I do hope that wherever he's at. God is with him and protects him, especially because I know he's Canadian. So I don't know. And right now, Canada is not in a good place, as we all know. So I really hope that he, not just him, Spy Kitten is another one I haven't seen in a very long time, and Justin Beers is another one that I, whose YouTube terminated his channel and all his very useful videos on Christianity are lost now. So, you know, it's an, a constant attack on the conspiracy theories that people should listen to and now they're gone. So, and here we are. So, but focusing primarily on, Christian, on Mario Bryson I can't understand his position. I mean, the guy is not perfect. I mean, I've seen his videos. It seems he was obsessed with conspiracy theories, especially the Illuminati, to the point that I find that I myself thought he was he wanted to join them rather than expose them. Cause it's it was so then well it started like that, but then in I saw that the Christian aspect, so he started starting to talk more about God related content. And I must say, 50 50, he was right. And most of the part, most of the in things, in most of the parts that people really don't think about, like your salvation is one thing that people really don't think about. They, in considering that you can lose it because if you stray away from God, <laughs> Who do you walk with? Satan. I mean, and you know, I saw his video, and I in his position, 
um, if it was me, I wouldn't show my face on social media ever again. <laughs> but at the same time, we all have fallen short. So, you know, nothing's perfect in this world. You're gonna fall. Especially if you're a Christian, you're gonna have tough times in where you're gonna feel like you're missing out on on stuff, even though you're truly missing out on sin. And you're going to, the whole world's watching because you're like a perfect person. Nothing can go wrong in your life. You're Ned Flanders. All you have to do is pray and bam. That's kind of how the world sees you. And then they don't realize that you're just human, a mortal in this world that is imperfect. And the spiritual world is not kind to Christians. They make their lives even tougher than it was before you weren't born again. Primarily because now you know the truth and you can spread the message to others and help them see the light. So the light of the world, I don't know if you've seen, if you've been to the Mariana Trench, you are the light in that darkness. So the light obviously is gonna, it's not gonna be light by, by the surroundings. So you're gonna get attacked hard, in much, in a lot harder than your, the individuals around you. So everybody has their personal, you know, internal conflicts, their their struggles. Nothing's perfect in this world. So I had a lot of time to reflect on Mario, and I saw that his redemption, his videos, and where he let out what's what's going on, how he spent his money, his on drugs, and his homosexual tendencies, if you will, because I, I saw that to the great minds and where I'm not too familiar in, how, in his nudes linked. I'm just reading on what that backlash came from. So I really haven't heard it from him as much as other people. And the videos that I have seen are videos of people criticizing him as a hypocrite, more so than, you know, it's, it's tough. It, it, it's tough. It, it, I mean, it's tough. And he, de he deleted his Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, so... All that's left is his Twitter, which he doesn't tweet. All that's left is other his TikTok videos, which he hasn't updated since 2021. And the last I really heard from him is that he had a girlfriend, and that he's gonna reflect on things he should have done better. So, I really hope that everything's going well. Um, just give me an insight on how hard, especially if you're a teenager or a youth person, um, with this world, with the propaganda, the Hollywood, which is oozes crap propaganda that is off the roof to the point that you just have to turn, you have to have boycott Hollywood from your life you have entirely in the, and just be an Amish basically in the Western world or be one of those, uh, those you know, I'm turning old quickly because I boycotted Hollywood even though of my back of posters it's you just, I can't allow myself to submit to the garbage in and out principle that is Hollywood um, and you can tell that they're writing out of ideas that it's just smokes and mirrors that they work for corrupt politicians and the elites and their primary goal is to be haunters of men or in this case Haunters of your soul. So what they want is your soul and, and cast a large net to drag you straight to hell Because that's what they do. That's who they work for. That's their main objective to get you to end up in hell and a Christian's primary um, 
um, mission is to recruit people and rescue them from hell by sharing your testimony, living a righteous life, by not just reading the gospel, but also living it as well. Because it's not the things you do in public that matters, it's what you do in private that matters most, because that's where God sees you and takes notes the most, and that's where you're going to be more the most accountable for. So I saw, um, I saw his video and I was like, whoa, I never knew this, but, and I could reflect it because I have points in my life you know, where I did walk away from Christianity and I didn't want anything to do with it for a very long time to the point that I even started liking Harry Potter even more than I <laughs> and I had, and I was living a double life myself too. And it's primarily because I came from strict Pentecostal Christian parents who's on, who only taught me how to go from home to church, from school, from home. That's my cycle. And, and it took me until college to break free from it. So I understood where he was coming from. And, and when you're a Christian a very long time, you kind of feel like you're missing out on having a girlfriend. You're missing out on sex. You're missing out on cool friends who can, you know, powerful connections, parties, travels, trends. Happiness on material stuff like cell phones, cars, and a 12k followers or 27k followers, you name it. You're just you're, you're just living the celebrity status. So in other words, we want the celebrity status, but under lower, you know, at the, and just feel involved in other people like. They care about you, even though you lose friends as you go along, you know. It's just all of this comes down to what are you missing out on? Or well, sometimes things don't turn out the way you want it to. Like, for example, there's Christians who find religion instead of Christ and they're fine, they're empty, they're empty, they're like, I'm okay, I'm following everything. I'm doing everything that the Bible asks me to. What? Why am I doing wrong? When to where did I go wrong? And then you realize, oh sure, I've been, I've been doing this for such a long time that I kind of missed out. And then they become bitter and resentful and full of hate. And they become the very thing they used, they preach against. And then you get the fall from grace and more. The following, the apostasy. So, all of this just makes a large resentment echo chamber that you cannot break free because the root of bitterness is deep. So, that only takes Christ and the consistency of having Him help you during sessions, therapy sessions, to help you understand where you went wrong, how you can fix it, and how to find a cure for your for your condition, your spiritual condition. So I've been watching those I w I watched his videos and his testimony and I kinda do believe him. And I also hope that he indeed keeps up keeps his word and and keeps his face full up and you know you fall down but you learn from your mistakes you don't repeat them and that he, he's working with God and so, so that this can so that you know he can heal the wounds especially other people who saw what he did and then no longer see him as 
as anything more than a, than a pled, plagiarist or a con artist or you name it because he had a large following so you know I don't know how you I don't, I don't speak for anybody else but for a non-christian who's that would be a huge stepping stone so you know stepping block if you will so I do hope that he find like you know I haven't heard from him alongside Spike Kitten and Justin Beers. These are the type of people who I pray for the most every day because I mean they're like they have the leader mindset and they have a cult, uh, they have a following and they have and they're like so they have a large outlet to reach people and they have done so successfully and now they're gone. So may God protect them at all times if they're lost to find him and, and so they can find them before they perish. And you know it's it is tough. It's tough. In in today's world, which is and right now I'm in insane asylum. You know, it's even tougher. It's even tougher because we were we're reverting back to the Babylonian era, and where you get sent to the to the lion's den. And the censorship is at an all-time high. Propaganda is at an all-time high. Lawlessness as a whole is at an all-time high. And the red horse is getting momentum, which is communism is getting momentum. So. All we can do is pray, share our testimonies, just like we're doing in this video, to other believers, to let them know that they're not alone, and that God is with us always, even in our lowest lows. And, you know, God is with us. Always in the dark, in the darkest of nights, in a bread of days, he's with us always, and he's the only one who's gonna be faithful to us because our family are not gonna be there when always, and our friends are not gonna always be there. Your kids are not always gonna be there. Who's only the only one who's gonna be there is the one who brought you who brought you to life and gave you life. For, that is God. He's the only one who's gonna be there. So this is my thoughts for today. Um thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps. You know, anyone who's, uh, I'm probably not the only one with, the, with this thoughts on my mind, and I'm probably not the only one thinking about this. So, you know, share your thoughts below and let me know. Can I talk to me? I'm open. And, well, God bless. And I'll see you all very soon.